If my husband ever told me that I could just starve and he wasn't worried about like fixing my hangry problem, I might end up a widow. Happy apple picking day! As always, for our new friends that have never joined us before, every Tuesday, people send in stories to our subreddit, r slash am I the bad apple, for situations where they're not sure if they acted appropriately or not. We pick four of those stories and we read them. We mull over the situations, we decide if they're a good apple, a bad apple, a crab apple. Sometimes we agree and sometimes we don't, but that's just what happens when different people come from different branches of the apple tree. It's okay. We like to have civil discussions in the comments. Sometimes you learn something, sometimes you teach somebody something. We're never too old to learn a new perspective. Vixie, stop ripping up my carpet! Excuse her, she's being rude. Without further ado, let's get started with this week's episode of Am I the Bad Apple? Apple number one. Am I the bad apple for falling asleep at work? For a little background information, I am 25. I normally work as a caregiver during the day. I don't usually do nights because I like to be at home with my dog and I don't like to sleep during the day. Last night, I got a call in the middle of the night that woke me up and it was my job. They were begging me to go to this client's house to take over for another caregiver. This was at 12.20 in the morning. At first I told them no, cause I'm supposed to be at work at nine in the morning for a different client and I didn't think it would be a good idea for me to work cause I hadn't slept any and I would have to be awake all night long. They said, don't worry, we'll find another caregiver to take over your client the next day. We just really need you to go in cause it's an emergency. I told them once again, I didn't feel comfortable cause I was already exhausted and I didn't do well staying awake at night. They insisted that I could go anyways. Fast forward to 8.50 in the morning. I was awaiting the next caregiver to come and relieve me and apparently I fell asleep for like 10 minutes. I'm a very light sleeper, okay? The caregiver came in and said my name softly and I instantly woke up. The client had slept all through the night and she normally didn't wake up until 10 or 11, so I, I didn't miss anything in those 10 minutes. But that caregiver called my job and told them that I'd been asleep when she got there. I mean, I don't blame her. We are mandatory reporters. It's literally her job to report that I did that. But it was also only 10 minutes. I told my work several times that I didn't feel comfortable coming in because of the possibility of this. I just received a call telling me that I'm getting written up and suspended for the whole day. Yes, I understand that it wasn't okay for me to fall asleep, but I hadn't intended to fall asleep. I was literally looking out the window just chilling out at the end of my shift waiting for the next caregiver to show up. I just drifted off for 10 minutes, literally 10 minutes, and I told them I was exhausted. So I need to know, were they right to write me up? Was I the bad apple? I think a lot of people are not gonna like my answer. And it, it's a little complicated, okay? And to clarify, I've never worked nights or anything like that. I've never been a caregiver. I mean, I was a teacher for four or five years, but different. I feel like she was totally justified to tell her job, I cannot come in. And I know they were insisting, I know they were pushing, but for me, like when your sole job is to be the caregiver, like you have to be ready for anything, anything they might need, whether it's an emergency, whether it's something that's not an emergency, the moment you show up for work, like you are on, you are on duty, you're at your job. And I feel like she would have been completely justified to put her foot down and tell her job, I cannot come in today, sorry. You're gonna have to find somebody else. For me, I feel like the moment she gave in and the moment she said, okay, I will be there, it became her responsibility to be alert and ready, and she wasn't. Now, thankfully nothing happened, but something could have happened in those 10 minutes, okay? When it comes to emergency situations, like they said that this was, and I don't know what it was, things can happen pretty quick. Someone can be okay one second and not okay the next. And I say that as someone who has seen personally in family, medical emergencies happen that quickly. One second someone is fine and the next they are on the floor and they're not fine. And if a client's in the position where they need a caregiver 24 seven, that 10 minutes, that could be life or death. I'm not saying something did happen in those 10 minutes. Luckily nothing did, but again, once she gave in and accepted and decided to show up to that job, 
I feel like it was her responsibility to do anything and everything she needed to do to be alert, to be awake, to be ready to do anything she might have needed to do at her job. And yeah, she's correct. Mandated reporters. That other caregiver should have reported her. Because that caregiver doesn't know if it was really 10 minutes or if she lied and it was six hours. Like, you don't, you just don't know that. And it's always better to be safe than sorry in those situations. It is also her fault that she fell asleep. She accepted, yes, the job was pushy. And when they were told, oh yeah, I haven't had a lot of sleep, I'm exhausted, they should have exhausted other options. But we also don't know if they did or didn't do that. We don't know if this was their last case resort or not. But for me, the moment she accepted and caved and said, all right, fine, I'll do it, that's when all responsibility to be present at her job, like that's when all that fell on her, in my opinion, okay? So I'm going to go bad apple like if i were if i were still teaching and i told my school like hey i'm not feeling that great so i just i'm gonna call in a sub and they're like oh we don't we don't have enough subs you need to come in it would be well within my right to say no figure it out you're the admin i'm not coming in i'm not feeling well i can't stay awake i'm sick if i didn't and i fell asleep at school do you know how many parents would want to have my head? It doesn't matter. Yes, I told them I was sick. I told them I wasn't feeling well. But the moment I show up, all that goes out the window because I have to care for all these kids. Again, I'm going to go bad apple. And if you are someone that works nights or works in this kind of position and you have a different opinion on this or anything, I would love to hear your take. I would love to know why you think I'm wrong. If you do, as always, I don't always get to respond to all the comments, but I do read as much as I can. And like I said, we're never too old to learn something new, but just based on the information that I have and me comparing it to like, if I were to go to school sick or anything like that, that's what I feel like, my, my grandparents. They aren't at the point where they need a caregiver, but if they were, I would be very upset if I found out that their caregiver fell asleep. Luckily, nothing happened this time, but that is not always the case. And if you're gonna show up, that's your duty to be ready for that. Apple number two. Am I the bad apple for telling my son he's spoiled? My male 57, son, male 23, is engaged to Peggy, female 22. They've been engaged for five months or so. Our cultures dictate that Peggy's father and I share the costs for their wedding. Peggy's father said that we should provide about $10,000 each, so like a total of $20,000. <laughs> I mean, I could afford that, but that seems insane and super extravagant to me. I said I would give $5,000 and Peggy's dad can give whatever he wanted. Peggy's dad ended up also contributing $5 to just match what I gave. That should be more than enough. I told my son this and he told me outright that that wasn't going to be enough. His exact words were, I don't mind. I figured that me and Peggy would have to pay some for the wedding. I said, excuse me? I asked what he meant by that and he said that no way they would be able to do their wedding in under $10,000. I said, um, my own wedding after haggling deals only came out to be about $7,000. So that shouldn't be an issue. My son argued against that saying that my wedding was 40 years ago and prices were different. He outlined some prices and said that the cheapest venue he could find alone was $5,000 and food alone was going to be $2,500,000. That's what negotiating is for. He said again that he didn't mind and he thanked me for giving him the money for the wedding but I honestly felt hurt that he thought we weren't giving enough. I said, how could food come out to be $2,500? And he said that that was only about $25 a person. I said, okay, why don't you just order pizzas or sub sandwiches or something like that? But he just looked at me like I was crazy. I said, okay, fine. Then we'll just negotiate with the photographer and offer less for them and maybe offer the decorator a little bit of a lower price and see if they go for it. But my son cut me off and said that that's not how things are done. Of course that's how things are done. And maybe if Peggy and him weren't so spoiled, expecting the best of the best for everything, then $10,000 would be plenty for their wedding. After I said that, he just closed his eyes and thanked me for the money and basically told me to get out. I was complaining about this to my wife and she told me that I was being a stick in the mud and it's his only wedding. 
My friends are agreeing with me though, because they are adults who know what a wedding costs. But I just need to know, was I the bad apple? Oh my gosh. I don't understand why it's so difficult for some people in older generations to wrap their head around the fact that nothing costs what it did 40 years ago. Why is that so difficult to understand? Whether it's houses, college, weddings, ordering pizza is not the same as what it was 40 years ago. Milk, why is that such a difficult concept to understand? And this is another thing that really bothers me. This is such a red flag in this parent. Like he made it such a big deal. Well, he told me it wasn't gonna be enough straight to my face. But then when he gives us the actual words the kid says, not kid, I mean he's an adult, I meant his child. We appreciate this. Thank you. We'll go ahead and throw in some of our own money too so that we can have the things that we want, but we do appreciate you for what you're doing. That is very gracious. <laughs> That's very responsible. That's a very unentitled response of. Unfortunately, weddings are super expensive, but like, don't worry, we got this. We just appreciate what you're giving already. Like the audacity to try and dictate what your child spends their money on. This is their wedding. They want it to be nice and great and they want to have the photos and the memories, like all the things, you know? And they're using their money to do it. Listen, I'm aware, okay? I'm aware that the price of weddings today is wild. It is unacceptable. And there are some places in the country where you're able to find things for a budget, but there are some places in the country where you're just not. It's just not an option. And who cares if your child wants to spend money on making it a little bit bigger than you want them to? Well, I want it to be smaller because I want to be able to say that I paid for it. Well, that sounds like you're the entitled one. You want the bragging rights of, I did this. And before people get in a hissy fit, subs and pizzas at wedding, there's nothing wrong with that, okay? There are plenty of people that aren't just not interested in a crazy, huge, extravagant wedding, and that sounds like a good time. Shoot, I would absolutely go to that wedding. I would love pizza. But let me tell you, some of the best pizza is messy pizza, okay? You want grease to be dripping down the bride's arm onto her white wedding dress, or marinara sauce, uh, like, people can do whatever they want at their own weddings. I would never want messy foods that I have to eat with my hands at my wedding because I'm a tornado person. I can't get dressed before I brush my teeth because I get toothpaste on all my clothes, okay? You think I trust myself to eat pizza at my wedding? No, no. I'm gonna go with that apple because you're gaslighting your kid, you're telling them that they're spoiled when they're being very gracious of the gifts that you're giving. And like, you're trying to convince them that you can just go to a vendor and say, look, I know these are your prices, but I want you to do it for this instead. That's not how that works. I don't, I guess that worked 40 years ago. That doesn't really work today. Now I can see if someone were to contact a bakery or photographer, blah, 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 I love your work and I'm, I'm such a huge fan, but like I can't afford your prices. Can we negotiate something? I can see that happening. I can see that being accepted in by some people, but just a, you know, I, I can afford this, but I think your prices are a little too high. Just why don't we go down a little bit? No, that's so rude. That's not, no, no. So if you didn't say it already, bad apple it is. Apple number three. Am I the bad apple for scolding someone else's child? I recently had a birthday and a college graduation, so my best friend who's on the spectrum and has sensory issues wanted to take me out. We went to our local pizza place, which is one of our favorites. It was a nice day, so we sat on the patio. We were the only ones out there for a good while until three unsupervised school-age kids, maybe like eight to 10 years old, all came outside. They were keeping to themselves mostly and using chalk on the ground about five feet away from us. My friend and I continued talking while waiting on our pizza when one of the kids found a metal throwing ring and just started throwing it all around. It hit my leg once, but 
I didn't say anything to the kid. I just wanted to ignore it and hopefully he would just stop. Shortly after that, our pizza came out and we started eating. The kid started throwing the ring up metal stairs behind me and just letting it bounce, bounce, all down the stairs. This kept on for a little while and I could tell it was starting to bother my friend. I turned to the kid and I said, all right, I think that's enough for now. And he said, okay. The kid stopped throwing it up the stairs for a grand total of 10 seconds. Then I heard him hit it down the stairs again. Of course. I turned back around and said, hey, do I need to go find your mom or something? He said, oh, I was just trying to catch it and I dropped it on accident. He stopped throwing it around us and shortly after just joined in with the other kids coloring with the chalk. The boy kept glancing up at me cautiously while he was drawing, but he at least stayed quiet. But as someone who doesn't have kids, I don't really know about this world. Am I allowed to scold other people's kids? Was I the bad apple? Oh, I think a lot of people are gonna have opinions on this idea. Can you scold other people's kids? As we all know, I don't have children, so I might not have the proper opinion either. I'm not even at the point where a lot of my friends have kids yet. Like a few of them do, and I love being Auntie Bex, but there's not that many. So here is what I think based off of like my experience. I think that if other people's kids are impacting you or the people that you're with and a parent is not correcting them and it's like impacting you, like you are being affected by whatever it is the kids are doing, then yeah, I think that you should say something to the parents first. And if the parents don't do anything, say something to the kids. That is my idea. Like if, if you tell the parents like, hey, your kid is throwing stuff and it hit me, could we please, could we, you know, reel it in a little bit? And the parents are like, oh, they're fine. Or, oh yeah, yeah, got it. But they don't actually like, tell Johnny to stop or anything like that and it happens again, 100%, hey honey, I'm so glad you're having fun but I've gotten hit by your ring twice now and that really hurts, like could we please maybe not do that? I feel like that's appropriate if the parent is letting their child hit you with things. But that being said, I also have the opinion that it has to be reasonable and what I mean by that is if you go to a park and there's kids running, screaming, and it's just annoying you that they're like having the best time of your life. Well, it's a park. Those are reasonable actions for the kids to participate in at a park. If you go to a Chuck E. Cheese, and there are kids running, screaming, and it's just annoying you. These are very reasonable actions for children to do in a Chuck E. Cheese, right? If a kid is doing something that is reasonable for where they are, and it's just annoying you that they're like making noise or whatever, I feel like that's different. That's when you're being the Karen. But in this case, it sounded like this kid found whatever kind of metal throwing ring. It didn't sound like he was using it to actually play the ring toss game. He was just throwing it up and letting it hit people and letting it make noise wherever he was throwing it. Not only is it obnoxious, but it's a safety hazard, okay? If it's hitting people, I'm assuming if it's a metal throwing ring, then it's like a couple pounds. Like that could hurt especially a child if it hit them in the head or anything like that. And since there were no parents around, I don't think it was unreasonable to just say, hey, I think that's enough. Like, I don't, I don't think that's overstepping. I think that's pretty reasonable. And when he didn't stop, do I need to go find your mom? I don't think that was unreasonable either. I think that some people in the comments are gonna be like, well, he should have just explained that his friend had sensory issues. Well, that's not the kid's business. You know, I don't think that he should have had to explain that. The kid was participating in inappropriate action and he just asked him to stop. I don't personally think any lines were crossed. Now again, I don't have kids. So if there are any moms or dads out there that you're like, Rebecca, you are way off. Like, just let me know. We can talk about it in the comments. I don't personally see anything wrong with this, but you know, I just don't have kids. <laughs> it's like the kids from a few weeks ago in the Bad Apple episode where the kids were at the movie theater and they were ruining the movie for everybody else. Cause they wouldn't stop turning. When you go to public places, you know, participating in social norms that other people can enjoy their time is important. It's not just about you and your kids. Other people want to enjoy the movie. Other people want to enjoy their meal. Like this is a public place for everybody to enjoy. And I don't think it's unreasonable to expect people to adhere to those social norms. Oh, I don't think I called it. Good apple. We're going good apple. Apple 
Pineapple number four. Am I the bad apple for telling my girlfriend she can starve? My girlfriend, 25 female, and I, 29 male, live in New York City. And there's this popular app where you can buy leftover restaurant food. Restaurants advertise surprise bags at a reduced price in order to reduce food waste. The customer doesn't know what they're getting until they pick up the food, but it costs at least three times lower than the regular menu price. These are hit or miss. Sometimes you get exactly what you want at a greatly reduced price, but sometimes you get something that you otherwise would not have picked from the menu. I ordered a surprise bag from this barbecue place that I was picking up on the way home yesterday. I texted my girlfriend asking if she wanted something also, and she said no, she wasn't really in the mood for barbecue. However, there was an Indian restaurant right next door that also had surprise bags available, so she ordered one of those. The barbecue was $12 and the Indian food was $10. When I got home, I unpacked the meals to see what we got. I was so psyched. Since I paid $12, I knew the value had to be at least $36, but honestly, the platter looked a lot more expensive than that. There were burnt ends, ribs, pulled pork, baked beans, potato salad, bread, onions, and pickles. Oh, yes. My girlfriend, however, was less than lucky. Her surprise bag only had six different types of soup, half of them being variations on cauliflower soup. She was very disappointed, to say the least. She asked if we could share my barbecue, but I said, no, I'm hungry. I offered to buy you some already and you said no, so I'm going to devour it. She got mad and called me a jerk and I told her, look, if you don't want the soup, you should have ordered something specifically off the menu instead of getting some surprise bag app. I then told her to just go ahead and order something off the food delivery app or something like that. She said she couldn't afford to buy another dinner, which I get. I mean, I do make a significant amount of money more than her. But I tell her, look, if she doesn't want to pay for the delivery, I'll just walk to the bodega on our street and just buy her something there. I offered that I would walk over there because she's recovering from a broken leg and we live on the fourth floor with no elevator, so I figured I'd do something nice and I could walk over there for her. She said that it was too late in the evening, so the grill was gonna be off and all she wanted was a hot meal, but I just heard excuses. I said, fine, you want something hot? You have soup. She thinks I'm being a jerk, but I said, look, I offered to buy you barbecue to begin with, but you declined. You picked out your own food and I just grabbed it for you on the way home. It's not my fault that it ended up being terrible soup. When you weren't satisfied, I suggested two other options, either ordering something from the app or going to the bodega and none of those were good enough for you. So if you're gonna be mad, just go ahead and starve for all I care. Well, now I'm in more trouble. I should be. So, was I the bad apple? I feel like there's gonna be people in the comments who are like, yeah, you gave her options and blah, 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 and she chose the surprise bag, so logically it's her fault. But all of those people are missing the nuance of relationships, right? Like, when you're with somebody, you want them to be taken care of. You want to make sure that they don't go hungry. You want to make sure that they have something to eat. You want to make sure that they are comfortable. This man, Avery Rogers, I, I brag about him a lot, but it's, it's deserved. Every time we go out to eat, to no fail. So if anyone ever sees us in like real life at a restaurant or ever comes with us, you'll see this happen, okay? Every single time we go to eat somewhere, Avery turns to me and asks, is there something on the menu that you want to try? I will order it if you just want to taste and if you like it, we can switch. Like every time and every time if I get my food somewhere and I'm like, oh, it's okay, I thought it would be better. He, Do you want to switch? I'll eat it, do you want mine? Every time, this man is wonderful. Like he wants to take care of me in the way that this guy should want to take care of his girlfriend. And I'm not saying that everyone should always be ready to just give up all their food all the time, right? Avery's just very, very kind and generous. But if you have an instance where like there's only soup and your girlfriend is hungry and just wants food, food. You can't share a little bit of your burnt ends or anything like that and just have like a little bit of soup on the side instead. Like how, how hard would that be? Like my guy, get over yourself. No one's saying this is your fault. Stop, oh, it's not my fault, it's not my fault. No one is saying that it's your fault, nobody. But like you said, these surprise bags, which by the way sound very interesting. I'm a little intrigued. But you said these are hit or miss. 
If you happened to get the miss and you hated what was in your bag, you would hope that your girlfriend might share a little bit of what she had to make sure that you ate something that you wanted to eat. Like when you're in a relationship, like those little itty bitty sacrifices to make sure that your partner is taken care of, that's important. I'm usually the one out and about running errands. So like if we get something to eat on the way home, I'm usually the one that picks it up. And I love this place called Kava. It's basically like Mediterranean Chipotle. This isn't an ad or anything like that. If Kava's watching and you want to do an ad with me, I love you guys. But <laughs> but anyways, that's like, that's one of my favorite places to eat because it feels healthy. It's not too heavy. It's enough food that I can eat dinner and then have some for lunch the next day. But Avery's not the biggest fan. Now there is a sandwich place near Kava, down the road a little bit that he really likes. So to make sure every time I go to get Kava, I take the extra time to also go down the street to make sure that he also gets something that he wants to eat. And that is me sacrificing a little bit of my time, making a little itty bitty sacrifice that does not bother me at all because I want Avery to be happy and I want him to be content. And like that, that's relationships. Like the little things that you do to just be there and support your partner like I just I don't like the whole I did you a favor by picking it up and if you're not happy you can just starve and well I told her that she could just order something herself but like she doesn't make as much money as me my guy why didn't you offer to buy her something well I offered because she has a broken leg that I would just walk across the street and get her like a granola bar I I don't live in New York like I don't know what bodegas usually have available late at night or anything like that so I'm assuming if the grill is off and there's not food or anything that would be the convenience store area of like, you know, chips. <laughs> when you want dinner, that doesn't cut it. Oh, but I offered! You didn't really offer anything helpful though, in my opinion. Like it's not even just uh, the guy doesn't care about his girlfriend getting a hot meal, right? It's his girlfriend with a broken leg, who obviously is probably having rough days and is in pain, is having difficult getting around. Like she just wants a hot meal. And he just doesn't care. And don't give me that, well he cares because he gave options. He didn't give realistic options. He's bragging about how much more money he makes than her and how, well I said she could just order something else. I know she can't afford it, but I offered not to buy her something, but that she could order something. For me, and I know I'm spoiled rotten, okay? If I make comments in passing like, my head hurts, or I have cramps, like within 30 minutes, Avery Rogers is coming up the stairs with a giant mug of tea and sliced fruit that he cut for me and he loves me. So like this guy, I'm just so disappointed in his lack of wanting to just like make sure his girlfriend is not just comfortable, but comfortable as she's recovering from like a serious injury. So bad apple for me, 100%. So for me, I got three bad apples and one good apple. Did you get similar to me? Did you get different from me? I would love to hear your responses down in the comments. Again, I don't always get to respond and comment on everything, but I read a lot. As always, if you want a chance for your story to be featured on an episode of Am I the Bad Apple, you can send your story to our subreddit, r slash am I the bad apple, or our discord. I'll put it down in the link below. Still, still getting used to that. It's hard to add another platform. It really is. And now with threads, there's too many platforms. For your well wishes today, today's episodes made me think of pizza, okay? It really did. I hope you get some of the best pizza ever this week, okay? I hope that pizza person puts in all the love and all the effort and it's like the perfect amount of cheesy and the perfect amount of greasy, not too greasy, but like just greasy enough and my mouth is watering. Now I'm getting hungry. I hope you get that pizza this week. Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope to see you guys next week. Bye bye lovelies. Mwah.